Luke 11, 1. Now it came to pass, as he was praying in a certain place, when he, when he sees that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. Let's pray. Father in heaven, as we go into your word tonight, Lord, I pray that each and every heart and mind will be open and receptive to what you have for us here tonight, Lord. And I also pray, God, that you grant me your strength, your energy, most importantly, your anointing, so that I may be able to minister your word to your people tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. I've been praying for some time for your church, for each and every one of you here tonight, um, in prayer and meditating on what God would have me to share with you. And just being here tonight, Man, I know that God has great, great plans in store for this church here, Victory Outreach San Diego. I believe that this church is at a pivotal time. You're at a pivotal moment. Many of you that are here this evening are at a pivotal place in your marriage, a pivotal place even with your physical health. You could be at a pivotal place right now in your finances, your business, your education. I can go on and on for all the, diff the list of where you may be right now at a pivotal moment, at a pivotal time. But it, it is in those moments that you begin to pray and God hears your prayer and then there's a shift that begins to take place. I believe tonight that there is a shift that is about to take place. I believe that many here tonight are approaching a junction. You know that God has a, a funny way just to speak to you and confirm different things. And I noticed that you have a lot of junctions, <laughs> highway junctions in the highways around here, in Philadelphia, there's not too many. Amen? There's not too many forks in the road. There's not too many, you know, choices you can get off here or there. You just, you just stay on there and you keep on rolling. But I noticed here as I was driving, coming up, and even born and raised in Orange County there, southern, in, here in Southern Cal, and coming over here to San Diego and, and driving on the, on the freeways, we don't got freeways over there on the East Coast. We got to pay. <laughs> and I noticed that a number, on a number of occasions, there are junctions. So, in other words, that junction means that you are going to, things are coming together and combining together. And you're going to have a choice to go this way or to go that way. And it's very pivotal because you can take that one road to the right and get lost for a little while because your GPS is freaking out on you a little bit <laughs> like it did with me today. But then you get back on the road and you come around and you approach another junction. And it depends which way you go if you're going to get to your destination. That's where it being pivotal is so, so important. Amen? Let's look at the word pivotal tonight for a moment. It is of crucial importance to the development or success of something else. It is central, crucial, vital, critical, focal, and essential. It is key and decisive. Important because other things depend on it. Vitally important, pivotal, pivotal for a defining moment. Many are here and you're at a moment in your life, you're at a place in your life that what you decide to do will determine where you're going to end up. As I mentioned earlier, in that junction... We, we seem to go 
the way that we seem, that we feel that we seem it's right, and we end up a little disappointed with that decision. But I got good news for you tonight. You can get right back on track and get to the place that God has designed for you. Yes, it's a little disappointing. Yes, you might feel you've lost a little time. But praise be to the Lord that God is able to put you back on track. And you're able to get to the final destination that God has for you. Amen. High school graduation, college graduation, when you graduate from your, your training and in, in the career that you're pursuing is a very pivotal moment. Because of all the things that you've studied and all the trials that you went through, you are now at a place where you have to make a decision. Some, I got to get a job. Come on, somebody. I, I hope somebody hires me for all this, all these years that I've studied and invested so many thousands and thousands of dollars. And so you are put in a place where you have to make a decision. And it's pivotal. It's pivotal. Those that are here tonight that are part of this church, that you graduated maybe the Victory Home. You graduated the UTC. You've graduated Veti. You are now at a pivotal moment of the decision that you are going to make. There are many people that find themselves at a very pivotal moment in life. As we've mentioned earlier, our nation is at a very pivotal moment. It is in need of leadership. It is in need of unity, of togetherness. Our cities, our communities, and the nations of the world. Churches, marriages, families, businesses, companies. The up and coming generation. The young adults, the millennials, are at a pivotal moment of deciding to put God and spirituality first or will they yield and flow with and under the influence of postmodernism? Some feel there is no need for prayer. Let's just do, do, do. Why pray? Let's just do it. That spirit has crept into the church. The Mary, the Mary and Martha syndrome. One is sitting at the feet of Jesus and the other is doing and doing and doing. But Jesus said that was the greatest decision that was made that afternoon or evening. Was for her to sit at his feet and hear what the master had to say. You see, prayer is not just... Us, us coming together and just speaking a lot of uh, uh, eloquent words. But prayer is a, is a time where you and God conversate together. It's between two people. It's God and a man or God and a woman. And you're meeting with God and God is meeting with you. And he's speaking into your heart. He's touching places inside of your soul that no other human being can get to. I know what it is to be in plenty pivotal times and moments. Times where you feel like quitting. Times where you feel like throwing in the towel. Times where you feel like making a, a decision in your life. But what will be the outcome? That's where prayer comes in. That's where prayer comes in. Prayer is communicating with God. Corporate prayer is praying to God with other people in small groups or in larger bodies of people, which we're going to do tomorrow in the National Day of Prayer. We're, we're very, very much involved in that in Philadelphia. 
I was sharing with our brothers earlier, we're very, very much involved in that. Tomorrow we'll be also participating in the National Day of Prayer. And why did they make it a National Day of Prayer? Because our country needs to pray. Our country needs the Lord. What is pivotal praying, you might ask? It's about how we pray and what we pray, especially at crucial times in our lives. There's a young lady that is in need of our prayers tonight. I said, there is a woman, there is a young lady, there is a woman that is in need, a sister in the Lord is in need of our prayers tonight, a family that is in need of our prayers tonight, and it's pivotal and it's crucial that we intercede for her and pray for her. Amanda, hello. We had the privilege of being able to go today and say a prayer for her and encourage her. And man, it seemed like she encouraged us more with her smile and, and, and her, the vibrant spirit that she had and, and the joy that she had. And the word was just spewing out of her. And I go, man, are, 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 we, are we sure that we're supposed to pray here? Maybe she should pray for us. Come on, somebody. Amen. And you know why? It's because you're praying. You know why? It's because your family's praying. You know why? It's because we are praying. And you know what I love about prayer? Is there is no distance in prayer. You can be in one part of the world and praying in another part of the world. And there is no distance in prayer. Miracles are able to take place over the phone. Miracles are able to take place over through texting. Miracles are able to take place through the power of prayer, through even emails. My God, there is no distance in prayer. You're here tonight because somebody prayed for you. The city's going to get better because there's some gentlemen that have guts and courage enough to stand up and say, we need prayer. Come on, somebody. Why don't you just give, why don't you just give God a good 10-second praise right now? It's about touching God when we most need to. It's about connecting with his heart and accepting what he wants to do and what he wants to give us. It's about positioning ourselves to receive from him. It's about praying well when we are tempted to panic or throw in the towel. Pivotal prayers come at pivotal moments and they begin to define us, which we call a defining moment. Some of us that have been walking with the Lord for, for a little while have had those defining moments. Your pastor has had those defining moments. I've had those defining moments in my life. Our church has had those defining moments. And it's in what you decide to do, and it may even be, what you decide to even say that would define you as an individual. You'll be at a pivotal moment where you either talk about that other person or cover that person, pray for that person, and hope you don't go through that same trial. And it's going to define who you are. Hello? Hello? Amen? Your pastor, my friend, Pastor Al, has been coming there even with us in the East Coast and helping us there in our church and, and taking a, he's always had that, that heart and that love for our, our region. And by him coming this year and even uh, us connecting even more than what we have connect, how we have connected in the past, even more now, I believe that we as our church there in Philadelphia and even our region of the seven churches that are there, we were at a pivotal moment. But praise be to the Lord that somebody is sensitive enough to God to be able to say, 
to make a decision. I'm going to go. I'm going to invest. I'm going to give of my time, energy, talents, resources so that I can be able to help these people. Hello, somebody. What kind of a pivotal moment are you in? You see, some of us are in silent pivotal moments. Oh, yeah, you're looking real nice tonight. Looking real together. But there's a silent pivotal moment going on in your heart. And all you got to do is just say a simple prayer. See, what you choose to do or what you don't choose to do, consequences come along with it. Either for the good or for the negative. I can't help but to talk about our spiritual father over our ministry, Pastor Sonny, who was at a pivotal moment in his life, traveling throughout our nation with evangelist Nikki Cruz and seeing auditoriums packed out and many hundreds and thousands of young people giving their lives to Jesus. It was at a very crucial time in our nation during the 60s where there was an explosion and there was a revival in the, in the inner cities of, of evil and wickedness and perversion and drug addiction. But at the same time, God was already getting ready to pour out his spirit upon the inner cities as well. And he was preaching and he was seeing souls being saved and touched by God. It was something positive. It was something good. But he felt stirred. He felt dissatisfied within his spirit. And he went back to that hotel room and he began to share with his friend and longtime mentor, I got to seek the Lord. God is stirring me up. And guess where he came, my friend? He came right around this area, here in this county area, here in the San Diego area, and he began to pray. He began to fast. He was at a pivotal moment in his life, and he began to pray. He said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And he told him, I want you to open up a church for drug addicts and their families. Come on, somebody. That's you and I here tonight. That's where it started. And it has evolved, uh, not, not only reaching drug addicts and gang members and their families, but people from all walks of life, all economical, all economical and educational backgrounds that have been touched by the power of God because one man decided to make a right decision and at his pivotal moment. Pivotal prayers come at pivotal moments that define us. They produce pivotal decisions and result in pivotal consequences. Pivotal prayers embrace God and touch his heart. As King David did after his sin with Bathsheba in Psalms 51. Whereas Jehoshaphat did before his nation when, they, when he faced an invading army much greater than his. Second Chronicles 20. Or of Solomon, King Solomon did, just before he was elevated and promoted and became king of Israel. He sought the Lord, and he said, grant me your wisdom. He said, ask for whatever you want. He said, give me wisdom so I may be able to judge your people correctly. It was a pivotal moment for him. What about Job? Some of you might be saying, I feel like Job tonight, Pastor. Ever been through a Job season? Come on, somebody. What about Job when he lost almost everything dear to him? His children, his livestock, his home, and his land. Job 1.20 speaks of it. He recognized it was a junction. He could either curse God and die 
like somebody told him to? Someone real close to him. We'll just leave it right there. Or he can say, you know what? Some way, somehow, God going to turn this thing around. Come on, somebody. You see, as I shared earlier, that meaning of junction is where two or more things are joined. A place where things come together, connecting and combining. He knew he needed God's divine mastery and God's viewpoint. See, because when we ask God for his viewpoint, he gives us his viewpoint from the aerial view that he has of our lives. And he knows it's our start, he knows our middle, and he knows our finish. So the advice that God Almighty is going to give us, is gonna, he's going to give it to us so that we can make the correct decision, so that we can continue to trot along forward and be able to finish and to accomplish his perfect will for our lives. Hello? It was a young couple that felt stirred in their hearts who were willing to leave the comforts of home, who were willing to leave friends and family and to move all the way to Bridgeport, Connecticut in the 90s and be able to establish the very first UTC. Some of you that are sitting here tonight and blessed out of your socks or out of your chunklas tonight are a byproduct of that decision that him and his beautiful wife Georgina made. I'm talking about Pastor Al. And because of that, so much fruit has come out of our UTCs. Oh, there's, there's professionals that have come out. There are book writers that have come out. There are people that are taking cities that have come out. Why? Because one couple decided to make a decision at a very crucial, pivotal moment in their lives. You're here today because somebody prayed. And as I shared, you may be at a pivotal moment here tonight. You're at a crucial time. You're at a place. You say, man, what am I going to do? I got to pray. Something so simple, but yet so profound. And Jesus came, was birthed forth, Lived his life, died on the cross, resurrected from the grave so that you and I can be able to have unlimited access to the throne room of grace and to be able to connect with God. Can we give him some praise tonight? What about Moses when Pharaoh and his army were chasing him out of, and he was leaving Egypt, and he was, they went to chase him and to pursue them, to bring them back. How many know that lying devil is always out there pursuing us and chasing us to bring us back into a place of bondage? doesn't matter how long you've been saved. doesn't matter how many people you have selfies with. Come on, somebody. He could have said, what's the use? Let's go back to Egypt. There's nowhere to go. It's just the Red Sea. How is God going to be able to do this one for us? Have you ever been there? I said, have you ever been there? But Moses knew how to pray. He had plenty of experience of praying to God in that mountaintop. When the glory cloud would come down, he spent that time in prayer. But he prayed and they walked and they marched right through the Red Sea. 
What about Nehemiah? Who was a cupbearer for the king? Who had a prominent position? He could have been self-seeking while being in the palace as the king's cupbearer. But when he heard the news about his city. Come on, somebody. When he heard that the gates had been burnt down. When he heard about his city. How many have been hearing about their city? How many have been hearing about the surrounding cities? How many have been hearing about the communities that you live in, that you reside in? How many have been hearing the terrible atrocities that are taking place, the horrific things that are taking place? But he prayed to the Lord at a very pivotal moment. And he said, Lord, grant me your favor when I go before this man. And God granted him favor. And when he went and spoke to the king, he was granted everything that was needed. Some of you are in places right now, even in your businesses, even in your jobs, even in the community, even in positions that you have access to be able to see a miracle take place, not only for one or two, but for groups of people, for whole entire cities. What are you going to do? Coming down to the wire here, Elijah, over his young attendant, when they were surrounded by the armies, all of Israel was surrounded. And the young man walked out and he said, oh my God, Elijah, what are we going to do? They're surrounded the city. And the prophet of God, God's man, got up and he said, Lord, open up his eyes so that he may be able to see that there are more that be with us. I said that there be more that are with us than be with them. And the Bible says and teaches, beloved, tonight, he teaches us, it teaches us that his eyes were open and he was able to see the vast armies of heaven ready to deploy, ready for action, ready to deliver, ready to make a way where there wasn't going to be a way. What about us here tonight? Maybe you can stand with me to your feet. We're at a pivotal moment even in our ministry. Where countries, countries, nations, cities are crying out for Victory Outreach churches. I wonder here, I wonder who is here tonight that's got a city on their heart. And if, if that's not your calling, then the next thing is, how can I help my pastor? How can I help my church? How can I help my city? What could I do? You're at a pivotal moment. And if you're here tonight, you say, man, no, everything's cool, Pastor Ty. I'm, you know, I'm not really facing anything too heavy or too crucial right now. Well, that day is going to come. Oh, it's going to come. I guarantee you 100%. And I pray that tonight, I pray that the words that you hear tonight would ring through your ears and your mind and in your heart. And you would say, Lord, what do you want me to do? I'm telling you, there are people here tonight. Destiny is in the palms of your hand right now. Somebody's life is in the balance tonight. 
and it's placed in your hands of what you're going to do. What kind of prayer are you going to pray for more blessings? How can God push you forward? How can you allow, yield yourself to him so he can use you to meet these needs? Tonight, I want to open the altars for you to come. It could be leaders here tonight. Ministers here tonight. Married couples, families, young people. You're at a pivotal moment. It could be offering you a lot of things right now. And the decision you make. There's consequences that come along with that decision. I pray that you would make the right decision. Oh, hallelujah. Come. Know where you're at tonight.